morning. This is the third, third part in rawhide backing the ball. This is the fun part where I, I demummify it. Now, if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the wrap is put on differently. After a couple of hours of the initial wrapping time, after I put the gauze on it, I did take the gauze off to look at it, and I could adjust it a little bit. It had set up quite a bit, but I could still slide um, the raw height around. <clears throat> Before I get started, I must apologize, I am <laughs> exhausted. I've been up since about 4 o'clock, 3.30, um, couldn't sleep. We have one more day. This is the final day that the preserve is open, and it's been a weird November. Um, the people have been goofy. I mean, there have been so many, like, people trying to get away with stuff, breaking rules, getting into trouble. I had to rope off the yard because these goofy tourists would go up in the yard to chase the turkeys, which is ridiculous. <coughs> Leaves were still on the tree late, so I've got fall cleanup along with bow, bow making. You know, what, even though I'm closed, it should have been done by now, but the leaves hung on the trees. Um, I work on a lot of things at once. The one bow that's not here, that's uh, pretty spectacular. I've been commissioned to do a juniper and sinew back, um, and it's going to be a modoc bow. And snakeskin back for a fellow, hey Emilio, how's it going? It'll be gorgeous when I get along further. I'll, I'll show you, you know, what I'm up to. Although I do like to keep Emilio kind of surprised a little bit. I have this cool little horse bow, I'm reducing the weight because it is 46 inches long. It's going to Malaysia. And so I did reduce it down to about 46 inches and with the curves it goes below 46 so I can mail it on the U.S. Postal Service. And of course I've got another one on deck. For those of you who are working on this that uh, have bought my, uh, my um, Plains Bow Blank and the bending jig, what I do is I'll do the first steaming on the setback of the handle, then I'll just put some shims in there to get even more. And this little doggy do is going to stay on the bending form until I'm ready to um, send you back because I want to retain as much setback and handle as possible. It's kind of unnatural for that wood to stay bent that much, so I'm going to kind of cheat my way through it by keeping it on the form. This is the rawhide bow in the video that you saw. Got it balanced. I believe it's going to be about 60 pounds at 28 inches of draw, and it is very subdued. A lot of my bows have geometric paintings, they're kind of wild looking. But this is totally intended to be a hunting bow. About 60 pounds, 28 inches of draw, and, and very subtle. This is a dark um, cherry stain, and then kind of fady black rawhidey on the back, and it's not going to have patterns on here. This needs to be subtle. If you're not familiar with in white tail and probably mule deer, I guess, if you're in other areas, it seem to be the, the larger game that people go for, and, and white tail deer are incredible. If you were to put something on the ground where they roam, they would notice it. They have an incredible memory as far as what their surroundings are like, and if there's anything different there, they're going to notice it. And so it doesn't behoove us to have a bow that really sticks out. It needs to be as subtle as camouflage as possible. And both having the dark belly and the dark back with kind of a, a mild camouflage scene there is going to give people the advantage along with having the paddle ball. So here it is, sports fans. Let's see what happened. I believe this is I believe this is the end. And normally when I unwrap this I un unroll it so neatly so I can roll it back in. But time wise I know time is a premium in your life, so I'm just gonna pull it off. And the first thing I notice is that yeah, that is a very, a very nice finish on this. No air bubbles. Looks to be a good bond. You're going to see it. subtle wrapping marks, but that's no big deal. I'll probably do a die job on this one, too. This is similar weight, maybe in the 50s. Raw hide back. 
good classical hunting bow, so I'm going to do it more muted. There we go. Practice good housekeeping. Don't want to have dirt on this stuff. Need my second cup of coffee. Get a close up here. Nice rawhide. And I mentioned that there were some wrinkly dews in the handle, and you can kind of see that it was just wrinkles in the hide. But that's going to be hidden. Nice edge. Very nice edge. And you can see I could almost not sand it because it follows the lines. So here we go. That's how simple it is. Wooden block. Because I want to maintain a nice clean edge. And uh, when I'm cleaning it up with 120 grit, I don't want to have a flexible sanding block. So it's just as simple as at a slight angle because I want to feather the edge. Because I want it to disappear when it's finished. And I'm not going to go onto the, the back much at all. Just feathering that edge. Go by feel. When you're working, oh, dark 30. You have to work by feel. Fast little thing along the top to smooth that edge out. Put it on my foot. And, well, not. I want to get this tip off. So I'm going to cut the tip. Don't do it this way because you don't want to give it any reason to pull off, which it probably won't because it's a good blue job. And the splice bonded really well. It's showing no signs of pulling up. I tell you, it's putting a little bit of dish soap. And that sizing water. Other side. Just like the first side. Oh, that handle joint is nice. If you get a bad blue job when you're sanding this, it'll pull up. I'll only do half the limb. I won't torture you with watching me do the whole thing. Like somebody needs to buy new sandpaper. I do a lot of sanding. kind of had the idea. I need to like go into the workshop and find more sandpaper. Ha, the advantage of making bows is I can keep my eye in the parking lot. When I open up, people are getting in mischief or they need answers or questions answered. I'm here. I multitask. Okay. There we go. And second step. Just like the first, I'll just set that down there. And 320 grit. And I will use a flexible block 
on this because it's not going to take much off. And all I'm doing is smoothing that. And I can run this one up onto the back a little bit. Feeling it? No, yeah. Nice and smooth. I suppose if you were really type A, you could sand the back too. But it, it's a smooth enough surface. This was the, the hair side, and Mike did a great job of cleaning this off. I glue it flesh side down. And, see that edge? That little white strip, that's where it's sanding, but that'll totally disappear um, with any finishing you put on it. And I use water-based poly again. Oil bases can be problematic. They can, they can dry over time and become somewhat brittle. Boiled linseed oil has been shown to grow certain molds. You don't want black mold growing on your bow. That is it. That is... How easy it is once the rawhide is glued on um, to just finish the edges. As far as time, I'm not going to put a bend in a bow that I rawhide back before four days. I'm just going to let it dry out. Luckily it's not like these little things, the sinew back bows that you have to wait weeks. I'll wait three weeks and then dry it on a rack above a wood stove for another week and then start putting the bend in it. Um, it takes eight months probably to fully cure an average humidity and temperature of sinew back, so it's going to change draw weight a little bit. That's it. I better get back to work, get ready to open up for the last day on duty, and hopefully all the leaves will be down so I can do my fall cleanup. Have a great day.